Welcome to Ag Choice Podcast. Here's Toaster. Hi, I'm Toaster. Here's Colonel. Hello, Here's I'm Andrew. Colonel. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds perfectly correct. We finally did an intro where we introduced ourselves so the viewers know who we are. Hello, everyone. Hello, viewers. Yes, I am but Colonel the RPG. viewers know our names. <laughs> Mm. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Guess what? That's a let's player. That's a let's player. That's a let's player. Some of them stream sometimes. Some of them don't. Wait, everyone streams sometimes? Yes. Everyone except everyone you. streams sometimes. All of us Colonel, stream. like streams on YouTube, which isn't real. It's I well, stream I on streamed. YouTube. Everyone else streams on Twitch for some reason. Yeah. The love split on their audience for some reason. Uh you can wow. see them with you can see Andrew and Toaster with all sorts of like overlays and stuff. That's exciting. The video is like yeah. lower resolution. <laughs> you can see me with overlay. Uh, oh, higher yeah. pixel would, density. I, I'll have you know, I stream in 4K and then record in 1080p. So First you've heard, go to Toaster Streams if you want dense streams. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's what I'm known for. Stream density. Stream density. <laughs> Every, all right, I'm PSA, Q&A, uh, MLGP uh MLB, oh no. there we go uh <laughs> announcement go watch cape escape now oh yeah we did launched a prod we that... launched a new tabletop rpg project it's cape escape oh, oh. cause doing all the actual work and that he hosts it and also uh, comp makes all the assets come together and so on so it's like the equivalent of when uh, Marty would make those really complicated Twilight Imperium streams, and then I got all the clout for it. Uh, I'm one character in <laughs> Cape Escape. Go watch Cape Escape. It's on my channel because I'm the YouTuber. <laughs> I I stream it live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash toasted ringtail on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. PST, something like that. But if you saw those weird thumbnails and didn't know what you were looking at, that's what those are because this podcast has better viewership than the second episode so far, I think. Uh, so go watch Cape Escape. It's inspired by it's an Echo. It's actual play. Yeah, it's an actual play. I learned that word while doing the tags for the video. <laughs> you should put it in the video title. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is an actual play? That's stupid. That is, that's that a, is a term, yeah. That's a stupid yeah, name. It's a term for it. It's like well, wow. no, it's an actual it's like, play. You're you're actually playing it. You're not just going over the the rules it's or somehow, editing it. It's somehow less meaningful than let's play. Actual play is one of the worst <laughs> named terms I've ever seen. It's like you play, I, but like actually, and it's like what the yeah, it's, it's like, the actual play. Like it's if, not, if, it's uh, not uh, a like yeah. narrative thing. It's not a script. You're actually playing. <laughs> it's so nonsensical. It's like, perfectly you know, like, sensical. Like people, you people, people, people in the decided comments, they if you needed think a name. Keith's frame apparently. of reference. People, people decided that it. they needed a term for playing our tabletop RPGs on shows for some reason. And I thought we already had terms for that, but I guess not. And so now we're calling them actual plays as opposed no. to like RPG podcasts or something. And actual play at best sounds like LARPing, like in-person LARPing. No, so it just gets more confusing. The terminology came about because people were doing scripted stuff in the, in the context of of playing tabletop games. So to differentiate between scripted and edited content and content that was just a recording of them actually playing, they are called actual plays. <laughs> there is nothing nonsensical about this. It is an the infuriating name. is so straightforward <laughs> that people immediately inherently understand what it means when they look That's at it. That's just what repetition does to people. You know that. You're in advertising and shit. That doesn't mean that the yeah, term makes it's sense. it's not an advertising thing. It's just terminology. It's just a very useful I'm just saying actual play immediately has like the JRPG problem where it's shrouded in so much context that you have to like explain it, for five minutes not. what you even you, mean because it's such a bizarre D &D title D &D tabletop and it's you find a thing that says the tabletop game the dungeon delve episode one actual play and you go oh this is a podcast where they're actually playing everybody <laughs> debate need, everybody debates in the comments about how i'm right about how actual plays no. is stupid, weird, vague no. sounding, is a, nonsensical. Is a space alien who it's doesn't a nonsensical understand label. talking. It's just weird, generic terms that refer to nothing. 
It's the most generic term because that's what makes it most understandable. It doesn't even it inherently like, imply that you're playing a tabletop RPG in its name. That's how like bizarrely nonsensical it is. It's just an actual, just an actual <laughs> play. What the fuck is this name? It's stupid. I think it's better than Let's Play. Let's Play, like the term comes from the fact that originally the original Let's Plays were meant to include the viewer or the, or the reader. And that's why it's like, let's play this game. I can't. I mean, I can't even get people to call my content let's plays anymore. They always call them streams. Or st oh, streams? No, They're that's always worse. Call, everyone Walk calls my content walkthroughs or streams. And it's infuriating because neither of them Hell are yeah. correct. Te stream is technically correct, but not in the way that anyone means. Because technically, yeah, I mean, like, you stream Netflix, so I guess, yes, yeah. like all of my videos are streams, but nobody means yeah, that when they streams. say stream. Stream means live. So it's I'm like yeah. losing my mind. It's like, great live stream, pal. And I'm like, this video is eight years old. <laughs> this video is eight years old. <laughs> I've become, a, I've shed all of my cells and regrown them twice since then. Like, what the fuck are you Not talking about? Them. Shut up. Not all the brain cells take nine years, I think, or something. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll be free. <laughs> no, then he has. He has redone it then. He's been doing YouTube for like 10 years. No, no, well, the video was eight years old. So, yeah. I'm oh, in, this, in this hypothetical yeah. where I said a random number of. It, that it, it kind that of exists, upsets me for sure. Keith has changed and, his brain in the course of his career. Yeah, haven't we all? Uh, not me. Keith should should change it again because he thinks actual play doesn't make sense. Actual play is a, everyone. <laughs> Get everyone, yourself a new fucking brain, Keith. Everybody side with me. <laughs> I I side with Bill's on this honestly. I and I'm not I'm I'm not a native speaker, so like <laughs> what I say doesn't mean much. Wow. I'm right about everything <laughs> all the time. Anyway, we're playing. It's an Echo inspired thingy where uh, a, a Mr. Beast, but a, but furry, brings us all to a, a, an escape room theme. Well, takes us all to like an Echo ish, like Midwestern abandoned town for a, a gimmicky escape room video thing. And then, of course, things are not are not gonna go great because Echo inspired mess. So it's like it starts off as a co-op adventure, like puzzle solving thing and inevitably probably should it be going towards horror. I don't know what's going to happen exactly. Vote Does in the comments know? who dies first. It won't affect the story, but you get uh, brain tinglies if you were right, which is the true reward. <laughs> But anyway, if you're listening to this, watch if content. you're in the podcast feed, I'm going to do what I did before on SoundCloud slash iTunes and everything, which is I'm just going to put the actual play in with the podcast. <laughs> it's just going to live there for people that want the audio in an audio form, because does, I'm does not making it. Not, it will be interesting. It will be interesting to have people listen to it only because unlike most actual plays where it's just people sitting around a table and then maybe some some like cool visual flair. Uh, our actual play has full on graphics and like a actual visual component to it. Uh, our DM Ka has like fully modeled 3D inventories. Uh, we solve puzzles by interacting with the items in the inventories. Uh, there, there is a very heavy visual component to the puzzle solving in it because we're basically actually solving escape rooms in the tabletop. It's very cool. Mm-hmm. Furries are That's terrifyingly talented, and this thing just happened like around me, and I was like, sure, I'll go, I'll do this, I'll do it. <laughs> I think that's too much time. And then I'm just intimidated <laughs> when I show up. <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> All right. I I would be as well. But I think like do you think it's it's why do you think furries are, have too much talent? Is it because th th it's easier to... I mean, furry. the furry fandom is by de it has two defining features. Queerness and creativity. And those are like comorbidity. <laughs> <laughs> My perspective on it is that many... I mean, you can you can read into like neurodivergency and creativity and queer stuff. And I think that there's an overlap there. But I think a big thing is just like a lot of furries, like furry stuff is inherently fantasy and it's not something that you can just like yeah. easily get. Yeah. So you just kind of have to learn to make it yourself. 
and a lot of uh, like young people, especially in the fandom, like start drawing dogs and cats young and then next thing you know they become like renaissance (laughs) painting level artists by the time they're x y and z and i think it it with this sort of creativity when you learn a skill like drawing or painting um you for the most part can you're not just learning that skill you're learning how to learn and you're learning how to get good at things that is yeah and so it transfers over to other creative endeavors because it's like, you know, if you have the experience of being shitty at drawing for 10 years before you get good at it, uh, the starting woodworking doesn't really feel that bad because you're like, oh, yeah, I was like shitty at drawing for 10 years before I became the fucking incredible at it. I'll just keep feeling. trucking on this woodworking <laughs> thing. Uh, and then you just end up like uh, accumulating talents. It's and it's a fandom that's entirely centered around art and looking at and sharing and experiencing art, which inspires mm-hmm. you to then want to learn how to make the art. And that's literally my own arc with said art. <laughs> like I, it, I directly want to try to figure out how to make a lot of the stuff too. And I interact with people that make it and watch them like develop over the years and so on. And yeah, when you're in it for a while, you literally watch people's. You can you can watch people over the years completely shift and change and develop and so on and see that whole thing. And you get, so you get like more involved with, even if you're not participating just in like witnessing the, the act and evolution of creating and how people uh, iterate and evolve in that. And yeah. so just, you just get really familiar with the creative process a lot and it just makes you, mm-hmm. and I think that just makes more and more, more people create. It's kind of just inherently iterative and inherently like self-expressionism, I guess. It's like yeah. self self yeah. expressional. I d I don't know. I, I went to a birthday party last night and I was up until three in the morning driving home and I'm really tired. So <laughs> maybe English isn't my first language anymore. I don't know. <laughs> it, it fell out. Yeah. Poster's just gonna start breaking out the Japanese now. Uh I, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, thank you. You have to pay for that. <laughs> that one is only pay for uh, Toaster Translate. I speak Esperanto exclusively now. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh no. Starting now. Me part on petas. Oh no. Eh. I think f- I think that's Esperanto. It's, it's for real, guys. It's for real. <laughs> quickly get a good, 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 <laughs> become an unlistenable <laughs> podcast. <laughs> or <Poor> yeah. <K. laughs> Ryan asks. Speaking of which. How do you feel about parties? Do you like them or do you just go to them out of obligation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Toaster, did, did you go to this party out of obligation? We're just, na- <laughs> we're just now getting this question from 10 months ago. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, I went, uh, it was my, it was just my friend's birthday party. I went because I wanted to see my friend and I wanted to meet their friends. Um, and it was fun. And yeah, I don't really think about it. I'm a, uh, I'm like a pretty socially anxious person when it comes to meeting people and especially communicating with them online. But when it comes to big like events or like group activities, I am pretty comfortable because I have a perhaps coping mechanism just built into me where I am very good at fitting in with a crowd. Like mm. I can I can read a room really quickly and accurately. So uh, it's very comfortable for me to be in a party situation most of the time because like I don't really feel like I need to perform that hard. I'm just kind of going with the flow and I'm like, all right, well, there's other people talking over here and there's people drinking over there and there's someone playing smash on the couch over here. Like I can kind of just stand and be inert and like nothing will there will be no problem with that and so i actually become really relaxed at parties and in social events and big gatherings because like there's no pressure on me to do anything like i'm just kind of i'm just one of many there's no eyes directly on me uh so yeah i like parties i don't go to them out of obligation i enjoy them Mm, i i mean i'm kind of in the same vein for like i feel like i'm pretty good at being social in real life more so than i am online but i also 
but I just don't like going to parties. I <laughs> think that it's <laughs> I, I it's fine. It I think there's like a limit, right? That the how many people I know versus how many strangers there are is usually the math that I have yeah. to do. If it's if it's a party that's like I don't know, say I went to PAX and it's like, let's go to an after party at PAX. I'm like, I probably know one percent of the people at this party, like maybe less than that, maybe like 0.5 percent. That's a lot of strangers. And what am I don't really want to have to do that much work to figure out how to interact with these people, which it feels yeah. like it is oftentimes. Um, and so. Yeah, you just go like, eh, that's not, yeah, I don't really want to do that. But, you know, if it's like, yeah, like a birthday party. Okay, well, what? I probably know 50% of the people going. And even if I know yeah. like just 25, 25% is still enough for me, right? I mean, it, I, can, I can interact and engage with like five to six people at max uh, and yeah. be in a flow there. But once it gets, you know, like 15, 20 people in a group, nope, that's too much. I can't. I won't be able to... <laughs> I won't be able to handle it and I'll just be quiet. I'll just sit there quietly the whole time. And it's like, well, what am I here for? What if I'm not like engaging? Why am I at a party? Yeah, I come away from I... a lot of parties wondering why I went to why I'm there. <laughs> like what, what was the point? What am I supposed to get out of this? Like the uh yeah, like I I instinctively almost said yes, but I'm like, no, no, no. Like I I like <laughs> I like being in rooms full of my friends. Which can technically be a party, <laughs> but almost ne almost never is a room full of my friends, like a group of people that's large enough that I think most people would call it a party. Like whenever there's a whenever a party is hosted in this house, which is not that uncommon, uh, I usually just hide in my room or I leave for the day. So I'm like, no, <laughs> no, no, no. OK, no. well, that's <laughs> this is like a group I, of I people. Yeah, definitely not into parties then it's like a One group of people where it's, it's like about, stephanie though. is here and then a bunch of people i just don't know and i am not gonna yeah. be able to do that well so the thing with that though is that like there is a difference between a party that you are invited to or like is for a group that you are specifically part of and like so like the birthday party i went to last night i knew one person but then i went there and like I met all of their friends and we all had things in common. So it was like, it was like, oh, okay, this is like a gamer party with gamers. The conversation's easy to get involved with. Like, I don't feel out of my element because people are like, hey man, did you play Diablo 4? And I'm like, no, I don't really play Blizzard games, but did you play, uh, I don't know, X, Y, or Z? And they're like, oh, hell yeah. I, I love Smash Bros. Like, it, that's an easy thing to, to slide into. Yeah. If I, if I went, if my mom was like, Hey, come to a work party with me. I'd be like, <laughs> why? Well, I have I don't have any I don't know any of your coworkers. Like, what do you want me to talk about? Like, that's not I think there is a very big difference between going to a party unprompted or having a party happen to you just through cr close proximity. I don't think anyone would be comfortable with that really. Or like going to an event that is specifically catered to you and your interests, right? So like I think if you ask me the same question that you're just like if my housemates threw a party with a bunch of people that I don't know that have nothing in common with me, would you enjoy that? Like I'd probably go downstairs and be like, Oh, Hey, how y'all doing? I hope you have a nice time. Get a beer, maybe drink one beer and then leave. Like there's no, there's no reason to, I, I don't think that is a barometer for whether or not you like parties. Right. Um, Poster, <laughs> Poster's clearly down for a party all the time, as long as it pertains to one beer <laughs> and the freedom to leave at any particular time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, actually, that is true. Uh, the Irish exit is the most honorable way to leave a party, uh, and everyone should do it always. You don't need what to tell that? anyone goodbye. What is that? Oh, it means to leave a party without announcing that you're leaving or saying oh. goodbye. You just disappear. That is just literally vanish. the that should be the expectation for every party. If you get shitty about people not making a scene when they leave, don't yeah. host parties. You're a bad host. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everybody. That's true. I, I did the wrong yeah. Irish exit at, at Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> you did that was weird that was that was dangerous what, what? Ke Ke what does okay, that so mean we were we what were walking dangerous around irish exit uh -huh. okay so we were walking around a group of six of us we were all like drunk five or six of us okay. i don't remember how many there were uh we were all hammered and we go we were going to all of the like the 
the parties in hotel rooms. Not room parties. Yeah. We were going to parties at hotel rooms at Las Vegas Rockon. Right. And one of them had like amazing speakers and it was just playing dance music. And it was like, it was a group of like maybe 25 people in a room that were just dancing with like a disco light and some, some like rave music. Right. So me and Stephanie were dancing and brewing was there and he was dancing with Zach and Keith walks in with us and we were like, Oh, okay, Keith, like maybe he's not going to dance, but he'll stand around and it'll be fine. We were not (laughs) even in there for like 10 minutes when all of a sudden (laughs) Keith Keith is literally just gone. Oh my God. None of us knew where he was. That's not Irish Irish entry. That's like, (laughs) yeah, that's literally just disappearing. And we were like, uh, what the fuck? Like where, where's Keith? And it was it wasn't a like, oh, you know, like I'm leaving. It was literally just like you walked in and then left. And we were like, wait, what? Where, the <laughs> yeah, f- I, where I lasted, are you? What happened? I lasted probably two minutes in this like horrifyingly loud, crowded room where I'm self-conscious and weird and don't know how to move or what to do. And I just hate I hate the feeling. So and, I, and but no one necessarily knew okay. exactly where I was, but I did literally lean in to Stephanie and say, I'm going to go. And she looked at me and saw me leave. So it's not like it was a mystery that I had left. Uh, no, I... But what happened is I, it had been, it had been a long day of doing stuff. And I, I, I tried to, I tried to like hang around for a while, like outside. I actually walked at this, at this point I was just sober and I walked all the way up and down the uh, the top because of the top floor of that hotel building that we were in. This is a like open air like balcony railing hotel. walkway type floor, not like a hotel building, okay. like like a beach hotel type place. Yeah, like, yeah it had yeah. that vibe to it. So I walk along the balcony along this line of houses, just kind of glancing in the various like parties or weird setups they have or people with mysterious card tables and in distressingly lit rooms like (laughs) and just the variety of things (laughs) happening from room to room and then i go downstairs and i do the same thing downstairs and then i'm like kind of standing around by the stairs outside the building for a while and i'm like my back fucking hurts and i look around there's no benches or anywhere to sit down in the entire area so i just kind of like i just walked home to the uh where we were staying like two buildings over and just laid down on my bed. And then I texted the discord group mentioning that I had headed home. But I guess in that time, everyone had already split up to look for me or something. And, and when Stephanie got home, she was <laughs> very unhappy with me <laughs> for leaving. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Like the difference I, between I an Irish exit at a party and that is that at a party, there's an expectation that people will leave at one point. So if you're all meeting there and then someone is yeah. no longer there, you can go like, oh, they left at a yeah. furry event where we're wandering between rooms and then suddenly Keith is gone while we're all drunk. <laughs> That's a little different. I can, I can understand. Hurt. Like, I understand it. <laughs> it was yeah, loud. I, I especially understand it. <laughs> like, from, from Keith's perspective, I get that 100%. Like, if, if you, yeah. if I was in that situation, my first instinct would have been like, oh, Keith probably just left. Like, <laughs> he probably went ga- back to the This hotel. room gave me fight or I, I flight, like... and then my back hurt. <laughs> it's been a long day, and I just wanted to lay down anywhere. And there was, and I didn't want to try, I didn't want to risk laying down in the lawn and being like, ah, surprise puke spot or something <laughs> from all the drunk. <laughs> I, had a, I'm not, I was not testing any of this the fact that there's no benches or chairs was mean like what a what a shitty area it's to just, be in. it's just a hotel it's a hotel what the fuck yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, like, sit by the pool yeah, I, I just mean like, yeah the fact that the place is full in the of bar pool, the, pl- the fact that the place is full of pools but there isn't like a place to sit anywhere i'm like come on man it's all like outdoor outdoor walkways with nothing, no place to stop. They, they don't want you sitting down just anywhere. You need to be in the bar or a place where you can consume money. No, wait, not consume money. The other nothing's, things. The nothing's thing made that... for people. Yeah. yeah. This this conversation is really alien to me. Because I think really? I... What? Yeah, so... And I, 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 I think it's a me thing and not like a cultural shift. But the, the, what you guys are talking about is something I experienced when I was, you know, before I was, you know, up to the age of 14. But particularly in my, uh, in, before I was 10 years old, which is just my dad, my parents uh, and my parents' friends would throw parties. And, you know, about 
20 to 30 people in a house just eating and laughing and talking about stuff and all that. And there'd be kids maybe, uh, but not that many. So the party wouldn't, wouldn't be around the kids. It would be around the adults. Right. So I would just tag along and I, I, you know, it, it's a bunch of a bunch of strangers that have nothing to do, well, that nothing in common with me because I'm a literal child. And uh, if I was lucky enough to have a toaster in the party, who is the, the, you know, I would just somebody that shows up, drinks a beer, and goes to back to his room to play video games. I would st stalk them and go to the room and watch them play <laughs> video games, which I did exactly <laughs> quite often. <laughs> I I I I have very fond memories of uh, parties where I basically found the the, the person who didn't want to hang out with the rest of the adults and would just do other stuff. And there was this. I remember this one party. I was. You gotta I, find the dog guy. The guy's just in the corner was, and wants to pet the dog for three hours. The that that I've never had that experience, but it is kind <laughs> of that. So I met. Uh, I remember this person who had a piano and was tuning the piano. In, as the other people were throwing a party, so you can imagine what kind of person this was. I, 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 I don't even know who they were because it's it's been so many years, and also I, I was a kid. Um, there's um, cousins of mine who would just like play video games instead. And, uh, on multiple occasions, I would just you know go up to their room and watch them play in the Super Nintendo or whatever. Um, and um, but that's you know that's the one side of the the coin of parties with people that I am not familiar with the other side is what i the parties i go to now which is never ever ever with anybody that i don't know i never like i i, I guess it's just like i i don't i don't like I, it's not because people don't invite me because i actively deny uh I, I you know they learn pretty fast that i don't go to parties with people that i don't know <laughs> but uh but it's just like i don't i don't like why would i no i just no don't want to do so that i you choose to specifically go to parties where you only know the people there. Know the people, yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And like I and, and I like that. You know what? What's not to like about eating and ch chatting and like and my is space there, friends are like a, amazing, but you know, is there like a particular reason you you don't want to meet new people? Wait, how are you? Wait, how are you even meeting? How many people do you know then? Because if you're not going to parties with new people, how are you meeting new people? Is it even possible? Uh, we, it is because you, you can meet people outside of parties, right? You like I I know new people from. Uh, okay, just, so from like work you know, and stuff is just parties. It's like parties. Yeah, you work or friends or friends. Strangers. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't I don't think parties are a great place to meet new people in the sense of, you know, because I don't know. Maybe maybe they are, but it's just. It's a different sort of expectation because you're there to have a good time, and you meet and whenever, whenever you meet another person, it's if it's just in the, with a sense of having a good time, it's like a little bit skewed. Yeah, I mean, but parties can serve I, a I, lot of functions. Like it can be yeah. a range from like you know to uh, celebrate a birthday all the way to like a work event, right? Yeah. Uh, and the, obviously, all of them have like vastly different tones. I would never go to a work party. Never in my entire life, even if I was at gunpoint. Like, I why not? You know the end. people. <laughs> I would. No, I would party. No, because my job requires me to be remote for the safety of others. Oh, like, I cannot be near these people. It would. It would drive me bonkers to see them in real life. I would. I don't know. It would. The one time I lot. said no I to a work party, I felt like I had done something wrong, and I was like, I yes, I don't want to. I don't want to be with you guys more I, I'm, I'm trying to yeah. get off work to go home <laughs> that's so that I is think that literally there is, there's a slight difference here though in that a work event is like a unspoken social obligation that you go to that is made potentially more tolerable by amenities but no one is like really there no one's like, oh, oh I can't yeah, wait. yeah, I can't wait for the work party. Like when I when my company is like, I mean, I'm toaster, also not there when my toast when my company is like toaster come out and and come to the sales event and we're going to have a big party after I'm like, all right, I'm going to tolerate the party and then tolerate that. I'm going to tolerate the sales event and then oh. the party because my company is going to bring me to a three star Michelin restaurant and if I just exactly. shut my fucking yap, I get to eat really good food and I smile at people and they think I'm a team player. 
then it's like whatever who cares that's not an issue i can't tell but he's then, not a team player <laughs> yeah exactly they're like oh whatever like toaster's here this is great and i'm like haha yeah oh i i love your tps reports were great last week you've done the killer on that that's like whatever no one actually likes that that's just a thing we do yeah because we live in a corporate hellscape <laughs> yeah but the thing is people have the after parties which i have never gone to and i have no reason to I've gone It'll to work. many of those, and even then, it's usually a countdown until you can go home. Yeah, like I've done like karaoke with my coworkers before, and it's like I'm there to do karaoke. I'm not there because of like, you know, it's usually a group of five people out of the group of forty five that started the night going to hang oh, out with each other and complain about work. <laughs> it's like whatever. Yeah, oh, that sucks. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I work. I worked at my job at, at the waterboard for over a year and I only ever met my one coworker that did the same thing as me and my direct boss who were both in the cubicles next to me out of the entire building. <laughs> so I'm like, what the fuck am I going to, who I don't, there's no, I don't know. I don't yeah. know anyone at this party. And also I'm like, you guys specifically uh, d don't give me 48 hours. You, you, you direct, you intentionally slightly yeah. undercut giving me 40 hours a week so you don't have to pay me full time. I'm just trying to go home and work on my YouTube channel. Like I'm just, I don't want to go yeah. across the street to have like a weird lunch at the shitty place over there to hang out with people I don't know. Yeah. Why would I do I, this? <laughs> when, I, when I worked in an office, like doing office lunches, was this thing that just drove me nuts. I hated the idea that I was obligated to follow a bunch of people that I hated to go and eat <laughs> yeah. food in a public location. And like, it is entrapment. It's literally a crime to make someone do that. That is like <laughs> unhealthy behavior. I Seriously, it is bafflingly annoying to be stuck interacting with people that you only have to for like, yeah, like, I don't like, even oh, know. What it, oh, I'm not even... a team player. I literally go entire weeks without speaking to another person in this building. Yeah, like, <laughs> I just yeah, sit down. Literally... I could have done my entire job remotely, and it wouldn't have changed anything. But that wasn't the thing that was like in the cards at the time. But like, I literally would walk in, find my cubicle, sit down, work on shitty spreadsheets for eight hours, go home, and that was the entire day. Yeah, but yeah. most most importantly, I I like to think that. I do exactly what I'm there for. I am literally perfect. I have done nothing wrong. I get paid. I do the job you paid me for. I go home. I cause zero issues. That is my prerogative. I want to be the perfect, the perfect cog. I do not want to be a cog that yells <laughs> while it's doing its job well. Hey, guys, great job. You're all doing fantastic. And shut the hell up. Do your thing. Do the thing you're supposed to do and go home. Get out of my sights. I don't want to see you again. I'm here just like everyone else to make money. I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here to build a family. I'm here because I have to do it to survive just like everyone else. Let me go home. Leave me alone. Yeah. I know what makes me happy. That's what I do with the money you pay me. I'm not here to go to parties with you because that's <laughs> not what I get paid for. I don't come here to make money to do that with you people. I do it to go home and be happy. <laughs> like, it's like, ah, yeah. I hate, I hate work events. I hate work related forced mandatory stuff. It feels yeah. awful. I just but like hanging out with my friends yeah. and there's very few contexts yeah. in which it ever needs to be more than like six people so i i don't know if it's ever counts as a party uh it's yeah, actually party, funny yesterday my live stream audience got to watch how quickly i change based on the social context where i'm just hanging out and chatting and for Andy's group yeah because last night i was playing overwatch and just hanging out and chatting for like three hours because it was like i think was it kernel canceled so it was like i played overwatch with bird right. and brian and eventually jericho joined and I'm just hanging out and talking with them. And then uh, when they're leaving, Andrew and Mandy joined. And so I was hanging out and talking with Andrew because I didn't even realize that Mandy was like in the in-game voice chat, which I didn't have like set up correctly and was talking with like all of her friends that were also joining the party. And the moment I fixed voice chat and could hear them, you can hear me in the stream just stop talking for 10 minutes at a time throughout the rest of the stream, like only vaguely, briefly 
chiming in a little bit here and there because i'm suddenly in a social context where i'm where everyone else knows each other and i'm the outsider and it's like immediately i'm the quietest fucking person which is most of my life (laughs) is that like people have a weird reading of what i'm like because they see me in my most comfortable context of the thing i've been doing for over a decade all day uh but any other social context it's much harder to get anything out of me and i get real quiet real fast so I can't play like social deduction games with random people online. I'm like, I literally can't bring myself to talk to these random people. Yeah, I just talk. If if someone says something that <laughs> is something vaguely that I am knowledgeable about, I will just respond. That kind of thing doesn't scare me. My social Toaster anxiety is much, much different. It's not superpowers. Yeah. It's just, I am just, it's just I realizing that, like that everyone well. is people. <laughs> and you're just like, no, all right. It's superpowers. Is, I, I deliberately you'll hear, you'll hear all day about Toaster's social anxiety and then he gets drunk and Fortnite dances in his first suit and you're like this oh, is not no, where I thought has, this yeah, was going because my yeah. fucking yeah. Yeah. first suit is on and I'm gonna a say, yeah. but I'm just like this is not I was not... gonna say I, I do the same no I don't I don't dance but I, I like I just talk yeah. to people and, like, and that's how you I, get to know why you should hate them sometimes I, I, I feel like, whatever. I, yeah I feel like the anonymity is a huge deal I the way I like Inter- the way I interact with the world privately alone in my home is like foreign to anybody who's ever met me in real <laughs> life. Like it would make no sense to watch me just exist. But like, yeah, I don't know. I think that's, I think it's I have, normal. I have to divide happen. and conquer. Like <laughs> my, my social anxiety increases the more people know me. So like, yeah, that's, if I'm just, that if I'm just sense. near someone who I have never met before, who has absolutely no, no, bearing on my life who may as well not fucking exist the moment i leave like a social event like Fortnite dancing at a furry convention in my fursuit around i guess a few people could see me who would look at me and be like who is that i don't know and then forget because they're gonna go get railed in 20 minutes and just no, have I'm no scared. brain anymore like that doesn't it's literally nothing it's almost as if i didn't do it it, that's the real superpower. <laughs> the real superpower it's is that wrong. when people don't know you and they don't they can't record you, you, you don't have a memory of you or the ability to put your like put your identity together. It's it's God mode. You can just do shit and people won't know. It's like you never did it. So when people are like, oh, hey. Hey, who is that Fortnite dancing fursuiter over there? I mean, I could literally be like, I don't know. I've never done that. And who the fuck is going to check me on it? Like, that's that's whatever. That's fucking turning the game off without saving. (laughs) It didn't happen. It just didn't happen. That's whatever. That's so low stakes. Granted, my social anxiety is like. I get too comfy on a podcast and I tell Colonel to go fuck himself because we're good friends and I love him to death. And then all of a sudden the next night I'm like, do I need to apologize to Colonel? Did I do something? <laughs> oh, no. I told Colonel he was fucking crazy at Zomboid because his strange, strange <laughs> little European brain doesn't compute with mine when he's making decisions in the game. And now I'm litigating my now year and a half of friendship with this man. Like that's that's how my social anxiety works. So <clears throat> Yeah, it's not superpowers to be like, oh, I just had a conversation with someone and then I turned around and I they the object permanence stops existing because I'm never going to meet them again. They just aren't they aren't allowed. There may as well be a fucking ghost at this point. That's very different than than my, you know, my actual social anxiety, which is like, oh, no, the things I say have consequences and ramifications because I'm talking to people that know who I am. I have such an I, opposite reaction where I'm just like, ha, everyone I know is just going to deal. <laughs> oh, yeah. No way. No, I always that feel children like children is what one... we call selfish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one thing away. I'm always one step away from feeling like I'm about to be kicked from any given group of people that have yes. put up with me yes. too much. Ab- like, absolutely. That is my entire like, experience. Right. It's, it's like, I, I just, uninstalled like, Overwatch. I hurt Keith too bad one last time. That's it. And goodbye, everyone. <laughs> like, this is the end. Overwatch is it's, your love language. Yeah, no, I can't handle I, new I, people I, at yeah. all. But with this, with the same people over and over again, I'm like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's healthy I'm though. I'm definitely in, more of an of the, internal, 
internal fear rather yeah, than my external, day, like, my ideal like, way of meeting people is with a friend group where there's one new person at a time <laughs> mm -hmm. like, nice. hey we're all going to pax with this person today that's how i like, like. that kind of day <laughs> yeah and that's I, chill everything anything else is like this is this is a lot this is a lot for me i, don't I honestly I, don't I, never I, have a i'm never afraid of people rejecting me because Oh, the, yeah. uh, like I've, I very have, I have uh, very few occasions where I'm like, oh, this person is really cool. I want to be friends with them forever. And when yeah. that happens, um, I'm the person that, you know, when I get called out or do something shitty, I go up to them and apologize, like, yeah, just uh, unilaterally, because apologizing to a friend or to a or or like a, a not, it doesn't have to be a a a, a, a like a close friend or anything, but a close friend is, is even more important than what I'm trying to say here. Uh, apologizing is always like, you're always thinking, oh, but they did something wrong as well. Um, you have yeah. to apologize for your side of this, the, the, the coin. If you like, if you did, if you feel that you did something wrong and, and if it's anything small that is actually wrong, like maybe you shouted at them um, and not, not fuck you, Colonel, that's not shouting at them. Um, <laughs> But maybe you shouted at them. Then yeah, even even if you were uh, entitled to that shouting, you you sh like that apology is is a door opener, and I found that uh, through experience. And so I I'm like I I go out of my way to to do that whenever I can because I, I I find that it builds better friendships. And if the person, which has happened to me as well, if which, if the person just decides no, I don't want to be friends with you anymore, then I know that I did my dues, I suppose, and. Uh, yeah, so it's it's, but with strangers, I that like I just am silly on purpose. Sometimes I am rude yeah. on purpose, like not you know rude in the sense of you know, uh, like calling people's names. Although when I was a kid, I I might have done that. Uh, but as an adult, I'm rude as in like I say swear words and just talk about rude shit. And if yeah. people don't like me, then yeah, being well, vulgar. Filter. Yeah, being vulgar. That's the word. Yeah. yeah. If people yeah. don't like me, I mean, that's, that's a filter, right? Exactly, right? That's exactly how I see it, where it's like, all right, if if I'm meeting a bunch of new people, or I'm, I'm around a bunch of people that chances are I'll never see again, like, am I going to be a dick to them? No, that's not that's not what it is. But it's like, if they don't like me, that's that's not, I haven't lost anything. Yeah. Like, there's no, there was no downside. There's no actual negative to that. It's just like, oh, People I didn't know don't like me. I, what has been lost here? Like it's like whatever. It's my I have enough friends. Like I, that's that's fine. I'm scared uh, definitely in the social anxiety aspect of more like oh no, people have gotten to know me so well that now they realize they don't like me, and I have gotten used to liking them and having them in my life, and I yeah. I don't want to do anything bad that like makes that disappear because now I will experience the pain of loss. <laughs> just like that's how my social anxiety works so like yeah i mean when it comes to like going to parties going to events being a doofus like that's that's whatever that's just mean people i played overwatch mm -hmm. with mandy and mandy's friends and like those were easy to people to talk to because they they know what i'm talking about when i talk about video games they just they they chime in whenever i have a question like is that's that's easy that's whatever and worst case scenario if we don't get along then we don't play overwatch again like who cares whatever i was, yeah, I was it, very disarmed by somebody who was like when you imagine a perfect sandwich like what do you imagine and then somebody starts some one person started saying roast beef and then another person cut them off immediately and just said come <laughs> yeah, that's, great. That's, I was like, oh. that's funny <laughs> <laughs> it's just so sad. It's very. I mean, that's it escalated it. No so toppings, no other. Nothing it escalated else. Like, so oh, that's, quickly. That's the thing. Do you come need any more, Andrew? And the filling. I mean, I mean, look, man, I, 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 if you if you're fighting, yeah, just like a mustard funny. sandwich. Good, good on uh, you, dude. But like, give me some <laughs> substance, Jesus. I'm just gonna uh, chew bread. Fuck. They started questioning what they started questioning whether or not a cum <laughs> sandwich is vegan. <laughs> I mean, which is by definition no, is it not comes from an animal. Yeah, yeah, animal byproduct. <laughs> it's not about yeah, the like, method in which you get the byproduct; it's that it is byproduct. <laughs> like, yeah. it, I mean, if it helps, if it's sustainable, though. <laughs> I, I mean, 
that that's a more that's more of a moral question it is this many people on the planet sustainable i don't know <laughs> yeah it's, yeah the uh but i think i think yeah. discord cut off my joke so i'm gonna say it now without the timing the, wow the, you said no no topping or anything well the thing with c cum sandwich is that it's the topping and the filling <laughs> It's a good joke. It's a good joke. It's Thank you, Toaster. Thank it's you. Stupid. Colonel's stupid. I'm not yeah. apologizing for saying that. Don't no. <laughs> don't laugh at Colonel's jokes, audience. I'm no, I'm the math lady for, right for now. I'm, I'm being the math lady. I'm like I'm calculating the joke. I'm gonna figure it out. You didn't figure it out? That's <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Keith, it was directed at you. That doesn't the cum? <laughs> <laughs> see that guy? see joke what, yeah. what is that see? That was a fountain, <laughs> Colonel, was a that fountain of possibilities of? what I, I look i'm don't question me <laughs> i have <laughs> wasn't supposed to that was that <laughs> what was that sound what was that sound it effect? was it was supposed to be the sound to come yeah what <laughs> look it's a Next microphone question please <laughs> uh Ryan asks, "How were your high school years? Do you remember it fondly, or was mostly stress uh, most, or was it the most stressful time of your life?" I'm specifically asking this because I'm bisexual. I prefer men, so I'm basically gay. My whole class is homophobic, so it's hard uh, to keep hearing them talk trash about LGBT people without them even knowing that they're talking about me. And I'm going to have to deal with this for the rest of, the, of this year and the entire next year. Good thing I have a psychiatrist. Ha ha ha! Kill me. Uh, yeah, I was gonna make a I'm joke, but then it buddy. it went yeah it went like really tough to go from that. Uh, well, I hope your year worked out because this message was sent approximately at the beginning of a school year, and we're answering at the end of one. <laughs> well, uh, you know what? Yeah, go for it. I was gonna say uh, I peaked in high school. High school was great for me. Even with all my the great the thing about people in high school is that they're wrong about fucking everything all the time, including high school teachers. So it's literally just a period of life where if you just understand that everyone's shitty opinions don't matter and they're really dumb, even though it hurts to have to deal with it, uh, you will you just live in a space where you can do literally whatever the fuck you want. And it's awesome. Uh, so, yeah, I liked high school. I had a really good time in high school. I think maybe my freshman year was pretty rough because I didn't really have many friends. Uh, but then I, I think I did more stuff in high school. Like every day I worked, I worked on cosplay. I did a bunch of internet projects. The internet was great back then. I did a, I I've read a ton of web comics, read books every day, did community theater, did voice acting, uh, so yeah, like high school was just a period where I was like, yeah, I fucking hate my, I hate everyone I go to school with, but also they're a bunch of idiots who are going to bottom out at 23 and I'm going to have a fun life and I'm going to like, they're going to tell me that like watching anime and doing cosplay is, is fake and gay. And I'm going to tell them to, I don't know, eat a Tide Pod and see how they like it. Like who cares? And then I just did what I liked and it was great. That's my advice for people in high school. Just do your shit. Who gives a fuck? It's high school. Yeah, that's very true. The The realization, that sort of shaped my, my childhood from the age of 13 up to university, really, is understanding pretty fast just how wrong and sure of themselves people can be, and kids. And obviously, looking back, that's very easy because, you know, they're kids. Of course, they don't know anything. Uh, but, like, when yeah. you're a kid yourself and you're dealing with peers, like, you're you care about what people think or think of you or think of the things that you believe or obviously, you know, about the people, the person you are, that's, that's, that's super bad. But just as a general thing, realizing just people in general into adulthood, but kids already that everybody's, nobody knows what they're talking about. Nobody yeah. knows what their, what their beliefs are even a lot of the time. And you know, high school is just a concentrated version of society because you're dealing with so many people from so many different backgrounds at the same time. Uh, in in adulthood, I find, I think, I think maybe that's why some people get stuck in that sort of in, that sort of mentality, uh, or at least yeah. that that that's what movies tell me that are people like that they get just the jocks or whatever just get stuck in the the high school high school mode into adulthood. 
but the yeah. moment you get into the job market it's just it's a lot more insular it's a lot more the people you care about or the people that are relevant to you and there's a lot fewer just you know not in a negative way but also in a negative way there's a lot fewer contaminations yeah. from just broader society and i think that i mean that's that's coming from a, my perspective of of uh, when i was in high school the internet wasn't a big thing there wasn't facebook didn't exist uh yep. and uh you know youtube was just starting and all that um and uh so it it, it still is the kind of old this is this is the very dated type of advice uh, from that perspective, but I I totally agree with you, Toaster. Like, don't yeah, just realize as soon as you can that people are wrong. <laughs> people yeah, and like no, you're, exactly. you're wrong as well. Like we are all wrong <laughs> about a lot of stuff. We grow up, uh, and that's like if you can keep you know looking back three or four years into your life and being like, oh, I was super wrong back then. Yeah, or just oh, not completely. necessarily super wrong, but. Uh, like I was, a, school, I was a shithead as a teenager. I had, I th had I the, yeah, the dumbest tall. ideas ever about everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, like, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm Every not, teenager, not as a that. rule, like, is awful. Yeah, and like yeah. no one knows anything. And literally, I there is no teenager out there who like has an enlightened opinion that matters i'm yeah. sorry to tell you all like no teenagers this is like watching this, this is like a whole thing about you... internet discourse where people are like i can't <laughs> i can't believe how mean people are to minors and how rude they are about minors opinions and all these other things i'm like we were all minors we remember yeah you're like you're gonna be so deeply embarrassed by all of your opinions and behavior in like five years <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it happened like, to all of too. us and we all viscerally remember it's, it and half and it, we all have several things that happened back then that we like <laughs> that like keeps us up at night sometimes <laughs> like truly it's sounds, not good it sounds jaded yeah. right that's yeah. what the problem is. It sounds it sounds, dis it sounds jaded, dismissive and but condescending, but also like we literally like, lived it. Like your brains are bad I, and not finished I yet, and, tell you, and your perspective I, doesn't exist. And it's fucked. I cannot tell you how much I loved being in high school. I it's it was yeah. suffrage, but it was great. Like I would give anything to go back to that kind of level of like irresponsibility, but also oh, freedom. Yeah. Like there's so yeah. much you have at that point in time that you just will slow, which is why you sound a little bit the way you, why we do now. Yeah. It's like it slowly gets taken from you. You have less of that access that you do in high school, which is like your peaks peak moment. And to focus so much on in on the inside on like on the outside and you know like the world going on and stuff just it doesn't matter dude just focus just have yeah. a good time just enjoy it well just one of the one of the things the i think about one of the things i think about with this is that you know people uh, this is going to be something meaningful in a second it will make more sense but like when you're in high school your life is very scheduled you like you're in a class for an X amount of time and your day is cut into these bite sized pieces where you're like socializing with people and learning things and you have opportunities to do stuff. And like as you get older, you might think like, oh, like I want the freedom of like working from like I'm sure people out there listen to like the podcast and they hear me say like, yeah, I steal company time and I stream at work like woo. Um, and people are like, that sounds That's like the life company time. That's, it's extremely stealing company time. It, that's, what yeah, that that is, that's what they want uh, you to that believe. That's what they want you to believe. Slacking off. No, is, it's is reclam reclamation. Is what that is. It is. It is. It is reclamation. But uh, but it is also stealing company time. And I I'm nah. not saying that is a bad thing. You should steal as much company time as possible. It is a moral obligation. Yeah. Um, but yes. my my point in saying this is that like you might think that sounds really cool as like a teenager hearing this. You're like, oh, I'd have so much time to do stuff. But like. Not, that's not really how adult life works. Like when you have no structure in your life, your day just disappears. Like it just, it just yeah. it disappears. You don't have that structure to go with. And it's like, it's very easy in the moment as a teenager to be like, oh, I hate school. I hate having to do this. I hate having to put up with my, my uh, schoolmates who I hate, who like say bad things about me without even realizing it. Like, and I think the biggest life hack you can learn in this instance is like, Literally, I was in high school and I was like, I was like pretty openly queer. I don't know how many people like really understood that I was like gay in the sense of like literally being gay. Uh, but I didn't like really hide who I was what? dating. I had a girlfriend. For, I had a I had a girlfriend for a really long time. So a lot of people just didn't 
understand that that could be a thing while also being like I thought I was bi at the time. Uh, like, mm. they, but I di- also didn't hide that like I had dated guys before as well. Like that wasn't that wasn't a mystery. Yeah. But it just fades out of people's minds. So they would like say yeah. shitty stuff about gay people. Is, yeah, exactly. Is such a drug. <laughs> Yeah, and people would, like, say shitty things about gay people and then be like, but, you know, like, it's, it's whatever. Like, I don't hate gay people. I just don't want them kissing in front of me. Am I right, bros? And, like, <laughs> I want to I wanna be serious about this for a second. Like, especially for young, like, gay or LGBT people, like, in the comments. Like, none of us, us saying, like, high school is good. You just need to learn to ignore people. That isn't us dismissing what you're saying and what you're experiencing. Cause like, yeah, it does suck to have people around you be shitty about your identity. But the thing is, is that like, and this is not advocating for people who are in unsafe situations to just come out and be out and proud. Like there are reasons to not do that. Like that, you you know, your safety comes first, but like you also don't need to internalize what they're saying. And I know that's hard, but like, Literally my entire life knowing that like, yeah, I like like dudes too, uh, before I came out as like fully gay and realized like, yeah, I guess I don't really like women. Uh I Damn. people would say shit. Like they would they would be like, Oh, like fuck it, I don't want to see boys kissing. That's gross. It's, it goes against the Bible. People will say that shit and like I wouldn't get offended because like those people are just fucking idiots. Like, like why would you be upset? about what an idiot says yeah i mean they could influence the world in the future but it's not like they're vote it's not it's not like they're voting on gay rights right now they're a bunch of fucking dumb teenagers who cares they there is a non-insignificant chance that those people and this is gonna sound really grim but there's a non-insignificant chance that those people die doing a tiktok challenge eating a tide pod why are you upset about the dumb shit they're saying like i have i you know what? I have an example for this. Oh, I literally what? spent. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, wait, no, no, no. You wait for it. You fucking wait. I, I had an what instance. Is, where is this I, I going? sat. I I went in. I was in an English class on my senior year of high school, and in that English class, there was a guy behind me, and this guy was absolutely annoying. Every single day, it he did nothing but pester me. Just tried as much as he could to bother me. Um, he, uh, so it spent the entire time like that. And, uh, and, you know, the very end, right? So all, I spent an entire year with this guy bothering me. The very end, last night, before we walk down to get our stupid little diplomas or whatever, this guy dies in a car accident. An entire year. From one person bothering me. And he's gone now. Just wiped from the planet. That's the kind of, like insanity life is you like you can that can just happen so like it, yes. it is not it is not necessary to focus too much on like like toaster saying don't don't focus too much on that like it it can just snap out like people something are more impermanent instantly. yeah like people yeah. are more impermanent in your life than you realize and and you know i'm not saying like haha don't worry all these people will be dead and you'll be the cyber survivor like that's not what i'm yeah, saying yeah. Here. i don't think that's Obviously. what andrew is saying it's just like when you're in high school, as I was saying about your schedule, your life is really regimented and, and things like time just seems longer to you than it is. You sit there and you have to put up with your your annoying, you know, teenagers uh, shit talking stuff that you care about for an hour a day. And it feels like it's the end of the fucking world. And then literally they disappear and stop mattering. They just do. They just and, and you suddenly yeah. realize like, oh, shit. Literally, all of this worry, all of this concern that I had about, like, how this is going to affect my life and how I'm going to have to deal with this my whole life. um, You just don't have to. It's just not a thing. It's just not a thing anymore. And like pe- people are just trying just you, they just don't don't matter anymore. Like what the shitty things that dumb people say becomes completely irrelevant to you because you they're just not in your life anymore yeah because i'm eating pizza and i th- um and i think it's i think it's also important to to remember that this isn't to again not to say like just let people be awful people it's fine yeah it is it's more of the idea like if you like the important thing is people that you surround yourself with people 
that you get you get along with people that don't have opinions like that uh and if they do then you know let them understand that that upsets you or whatever yeah. but if you're comfortable with that kind of stuff but like confrontation with people that you care about is usually the like main path forward to having a happy life like you find yeah. people that you really get along with and they like you know you have a good relationship and you just kind of you know push and flow like toaster was saying about how he talks to colonel like that's the kind of there's like ways that you can grow with other people around you that are bad but you don't need to hyper focus <laughs> on the people who are awful like yeah just forget those people man like i i trust you i i promise you you'll exist for like 20 more years and in like year two you'll forget about those people you'll forget oh, their completely. Names, what they look like you'll like you will you'll remember someone will say something like this right and you'll cl click back oh yeah i remember there was a person but you will not you won't remember anything about it you won't remember the words they said the voice that they have like none of it it just vanishes it's so yeah. shit just starts happening so much like the moment you're having yeah. school, you're, yeah. your life literally <laughs> just starts happening and you're like i don't remember man fuck that like if that happened yesterday it's dead to me it's there gone. are there are <laughs> like, moments in my life as an adult where i will remember like i will just suddenly remember like Oh, like I had a friend named Bree, I think. And we like for like three or four weeks, we would get lunch every single day at this restaurant. Did that really happen or am I making that up? I don't even remember. I can't remember this person's face. I don't remember what restaurant we ate at. I just have the vague recollection that that was that was a thing that happened. You still and remember really Bree. Important. I, don't, I don't remember Bree anymore. <laughs> it was really important to me for a month. And this person's face just isn't in my head anymore. Whoa. So like what, what I'm saying <laughs> with that is that like every single thing that you think is super important to you in the moment and this applies for your whole fucking life my friends it doesn't really always linger like especially yeah. your shit from when you're a teenager there is so much stuff that i'm sure i fucking loved as a teenager that i cannot remember anymore i have forgotten more than i know and like that might sound scary but like i promise you like it doesn't mean that the stuff that you're going through right now doesn't suck while you're going through it. It can totally suck. But I guess what we say when we say like it gets better, or like you, you just like forget about it is like. I think realizing how fucking impermanent and how little effect it's actually going to have on your life is just weakens the pain in the moment of like, uh, like you don't need to internalize any of it. You don't need to feel bad. And of course, that's hard to get through. But especially when it comes to like LGBT stuff, right? Like you're surrounded by a bunch of fucking country hick assholes who are like, Oh, gay people are bad. Like you shouldn't be gay. And then you sit there and the source of that pain is you in your head thinking, but what if they're right? Why are you even thinking if they're right? Like you don't need to internalize that people. I, I'm really sorry to break it to you, but this is a great life lesson to learn early. People are on average, really dumb and really wrong just all the time so if you hear someone talking shit about something and you know they're wrong because what they're saying does not apply to your experience as the person they're talking about without knowing about it you can just dismiss them their opinion is not valid you don't need to care about it and you're not wrong or mean for doing so you can literally just write them off and then not care about it and your life will be better for it. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, just like, don't, don't care about it. Just move past it. It's okay. You're going to be a cool person probably doing what you want to do with your life. Now that it's what July, you're probably graduated now, uh, go to college and live your life and have a good one and major in whatever you want to major in. Join a fucking club. Chances are in six years, you won't even remember what club you joined. It's great. It's fun. That This is the beauty of having an adult brain that forgets things is that you can be <laughs> as cringe as you want and it doesn't matter because it just falls straight out of your head in three to five years. I I am very much of the school of, of uh, cutting people off that uh, are toxic for me. The It is a privilege, though, to be able to do that. Uh, at all because it can be a financial issue it can be an emotional issue because family is fucked up uh it can obviously be like your own capacity of uh going through that process because it's not as you know 
cutting people off that you care about is uh, at least in some way care about them in some way i should say um you know whether they're a family member or just a halfway friend or something like that um it's a process it sometimes it takes time sometimes it's not just okay i'm never talking to you again in my entire life it's just don't answer their whatsapp messages for a little while and uh you know give them a shitty gift like a yeah. like the 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 pencil sharpener that i gave this one person a couple of years back that's they didn't advice. never talk to me again. That was amazing. I, I, it was, I yeah. gave them a gift, and this is incredible. I, I am very yeah, proud of that. You, you don't need to put all your effort into other people, especially shitty people. Like, yeah. you, get, you get invited to uh, a birthday party of someone you don't like. You can just here's – here's exactly – this gets back to what I was saying earlier. You can just tell them you have, you have other plans. Even if you're yeah, lying yeah. to them, that's not going to hurt their feelings because they won't know, and – it's going to make your life better because you don't even like them. And you have to think about it this way, too. It's kind of more of a mercy for you to do that to them because then they're not hanging out with someone who secretly doesn't like them. Who wants to hang out with people who secretly don't like them? <laughs> no one. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's the true. worst anxiety. That's so just true. like you don't need to. I never thought about it like that. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to deal with people like that. Like, truly, you are not obligated to respond to messages. Every single day, and I'm sure Keith can relate to this, every single day I get like 25 messages that are just like, hey, hey, what's up? Can we talk? What's up? Hey, what are you doing? How's your day? And I will see them. And like, this isn't like a me being a shitty person thing. It's just a like, I don't have anything to say to this. And I don't really want to talk to you right now. Like I'm recording something where I'm trying to live my life. Like I have other shit to do. You just don't need to respond. <laughs> like It's not... You're not being mean to do but again, that, that is... especially with real ass people in your life who are assholes who you don't like. You can just ice people out. It's OK. It's not the worst thing in the world. But it I is do, also I like it, I do more or less get daily is... messages that are just like, how was your day? And I'm like, you're you're basically prompting me to, to make the conversation. Because you you just said a placeholder thing to prompt me to start talking to you. And I'm like, I'm not. I'm not going to do that work. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and create a conversation. I'm like trying to juggle tasks and projects and I have things I'm doing and I'm not, it's like, I, it's like, how about you just it's reply like I to need to, the same thing. I need to put in the work to create this conversation. And then the outcome is now I have a distracting conversation running that I'm, that I'm now juggling with the thing I was trying to work on. It's like, this is all yeah. downsides yeah. of res responding. There's no, up, there's no good outcome here. I mean, yeah, I think having another, oh, sorry, go on, Colonel. I was going to say is messages they're uh the good thing about messages is that they're asynchronous. If people yes. want to talk in the moment, you know, all, back in the day we used to call. Don't do that. Don't call people. But <laughs> the the point is the point is it's asynchronous. You can reply 2 hours later. It's all right. Mhm. Mm or, you know, Completely. 2 months later and say, "Hey, I didn't <laughs> I think, see this message yeah, even though you definitely did." That's fine. You'll usually find that like a long distance relationship and a long distance friend are two very different communication expectations. Oh, completely. Yeah. Like, I mean, not even friends, it, it's just it is like very, social, just people that just yeah. have access to your inboxes and so on. But, and there just are still, people that I'm being, comfortable talking to and like talking to, and I just send messages back and forth to them. And then other people, oh, I have like this backlog of identical, how was your day messages from like six people. I'm like, I'm not digging into this oof. mess, this pile. I'm yeah, not no, doing this. I, I just meant the, the the idea of like what Colonel's saying is like the idea of instantaneous communication on the Internet is like that's rare. It, like only basically like a small p percentage of people get that kind of um, treatment yeah. in your life. Like it's very more likely like I do that, too. I respond to people like days later sometimes. And it's not because I hate you. It's because like like we were talking about in the high school thing. Days just happen. Things just go on. I am busy. The things I'm doing yeah. stuff. I'm not just sitting here looking at a screen all day with drool coming down my mouth. Like I, I'm doing things. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. It's not rude. I'm not ignoring you. I don't hate you. Uh, I just, I, I'm busy, and that's fine. I have the expectation other people are doing this too. I expect everyone else is also very. Some people busy. are not busy. I, Some people are just sitting on fine. the sofa looking you know at it. <laughs> Good for them. I wish I fucking could. Yeah, it's same. Like, I, I, but I it doesn't. But it so it doesn't bother me. I just if people respond to me, they respond to me. If they don't, 
okay, well, I'll hear back from them eventually, I guess. Like, I don't, yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I, the only expectation I have is that if I ask my partner where she is and why she hasn't been home for 16 hours, she would say like, oh, I got kidnapped. Because otherwise, yeah. they'd be there. Kind of like, <laughs> Very few but things otherwise, are life and death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, on the internet, don't like, I, it's, yeah, obviously it's not about the hay thing, but yeah, just don't, don't be worried about reply time. Yeah. It's silly. And it's, I, and one, of, one of the things about this that I think is it's this what I'm about to say is kind of walking a tightrope. So it, you need to understand what I am actually saying here and, and not read too deeply into what it says. But like, I think especially on the modern Internet and in the modern world, everything sucks so bad that people become very idealistic at how they believe relationships and friendships and like just existence should be people become very polarized on this and mm -hmm. part of that involves like what they have societal expectations for and how they expect people to act and one of the things is like and this is going to sound weird but like we vilify people for being kind of callous or dismissive, or I guess mean might be a good way to describe it, um, in a way that I think isn't actually in line with making people friendlier or live a happier life. And what I mean by this is we put a lot of societal pressure on ourselves to be the best people we can be, especially on the internet. So you'll get this weird pressure to be like, oh, I didn't give this person a good enough chance. Like, I need to be nicer to this person. Not because everybody they, does that. They, they want my attention, so I need to I need to do that. Or, you know, it, I think this boils down to even basic life stuff of like, I need to open the door every time for someone who's walking behind me. I need to be nice to this person. And like in the case of this kid who just, you know, sent in this this email, they're like, my my classmates are are mean to me about gay you know they don't realize i'm gay and they say bad stuff about gay people and like that hurts and like in a way you are trying to accommodate for these people and like make a space where they oh, are so accepted too and like in in the grand scheme of things like not liking people and not wanting to spend time around them and like not wanting to accommodate for everyone and not opening your social circle to that kind of thing isn't a bad thing. Like, you don't need to feel bad for that. It's okay if you think people are dumb or think their opinions are bad. That's all right. <laughs> like, and you just need to let yourself off the hook for that because it's like, yeah, obviously it's not like objectively a nice thing to do to be like, yeah, I'm just dismissing this person full sale because they said one dumb thing in their life. But like, you can't be friends with everyone. It's okay. It's just it, focus on the people you like. Make life better for the people immediately around you. Stop trying to like make things good for everyone. You can't save or fix everyone. It's all right. I can. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that becomes I think that becomes much more I much can. more relevant for adult people. Well, easy yes. also easy easy to understand, but yeah, because it's a necessity I mean, like, a lot of the time. Yeah, like I work with some people who I cannot fucking stand. Like I, I truly do not like them. And like, do I, am I really that nice to them? Not really. Am I, do I cause a problem for them at work? No. But like if someone asks me like, hey, like, like Austin wanted to go get food, you know, after work and he, he suggested we bring you along. I'm not going to like go and hang out with Austin just because he, he did like wanted to be nice and invited me. I'm just going to be like, no, nah, sorry, I got plans. And then I'm going to go home and, I don't know, fucking play a video game or something. Like, it's whatever. It's okay. Like you, you don't up. need to feel the pressure. Exactly. Yeah. You don't yeah. need to feel pressured to Wild. accommodate a world that you don't f feel like participating in. Like, it's okay. Yeah, it's However, it's true. important you get good at lying. It's very important. It is. Yes. Um, it helps. But th it that's helps. part of it, too. Is that we think like, well, in a perfect world, no one would lie. Lying is bad. I don't think that's I wanna, true, though. Yeah, I no, agree. It's, a, it's, it's not basic true. privacy. It's basic privacy. Exactly. 
you are you are entitled to tell people you don't want to hang out with that you have plans and that you'd love to make it next time. And, you know, you're not going to, like, go to hell for that. Hell's not real. You'll be fine. <laughs> you can, They won't know any different, and, and you'll feel fine, and you'll have a night to play a video game, and everything <laughs> will be okay. It's, yeah. One place yep. is... Gaslighting I mean, is a professional a good... skill I'm going to put on my resume <laughs> <laughs> because it's essential <laughs> in the workplace, I promise you. <laughs> Well, uh, you, can, you can use it for for good, and you can use it for evil. Yes, as, as in, if you're the employee, it's for good, and if you're the employer, it's for evil. That's the that's exactly the dynamic. You know. Yeah, that's simple as that. I have like mixed feelings about high school. I'm trying to remember; it's, it has been so long at this point. But like, I definitely have like I have like regrets tied to high school, and that I know people that do actually have like relationships they've maintained and actually like were had something that was like <laughs> people that kept anything from back then essentially uh but yeah like i think like i remember like nine months after high school ended i drove all the way down to southern california to like one of those college party towns to visit uh an old friend of mine <clears throat> and uh we were there with with him and one other friend of his and those two were like jamming out with their guitar and their bass guitar and so on and like you know like being old friends and whatnot but like i drove there with other people that were supposedly also there for his birthday and there was a whole group of people overall there and like i'm just it was like one that was the last time i saw basically everyone in this entire event but also so many of those people were just there to go party at the location and not actually because they cared about the person's birthday that we were actually yeah. commuting all the way across California for. And that quickly became apparent. So like out of a group of like 12 people, it was quickly just the three of us and so on because of how like shitty and impulse driven high school students often are and so on. And, and fresh, freshly graduated high school students and all that. Like we went to like one of those uh, hibachi places and you over the course of the meal our large group of like 12 people just kept shrinking because people were just leaving what? and not coming oh, back group. right people just yeah. were abandoning the meal without paying and then leaving us with like the <laughs> birthday boy and stuff like the, the, the all these shitheads like i really i really do not miss most people from high school uh yeah. there was just like a lot of like I was I was consistently the like least vital person in every friend group, like the most immediately forgotten one. So it was just wasn't a great <laughs> experience. Uh, I was always the uh, I was the weirdo that was making friends with the teachers or whatever. Because, like, cause, like paradoxically, I enjoyed high school and that I was the fucking like Hermione Granger type that was sitting there like enjoying the classes and getting through it all. And being on the honor roll every single semester for all of middle school and high school without really ever trying. Oh my god! Like I, yeah, no, it was easy. I was always doing well in all of school forever without learning how to yeah. be good at school. It was, it was not a Literally problem. Literally, just a fucking goblin from like inception <laughs> to graduation. I, I just ADHD. Been, I regularly I wrote essays the hour before <laughs> like, class started. Yeah, that's, that's ADHD. And, and then ADHD. and then I did good at them. It was easy. <laughs> what, what, school's easy. What did you like? My first week of school, I literally caused property damage. Like, <laughs> that is wild. <laughs> I literally like I destroyed a uh, a piping system for the bathroom underground, and it caused a leak that required construction in the main hall for, like, a no, I was, month. I was, like, a less psychopathic <laughs> Misty Quigley. Like, I was receiving gifts from the teachers, like... <laughs> I had, like... Wow. That's insane. Yeah. No, like, the, my yearbook teacher, I I had, uh... I, I have books that were given me to me by my English teacher that was also my yearbook teacher. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I that, also got gifts from the teachers. Yeah. I, I got about books it. as a gift for doing really well from one of my teachers. But my only memory of this experience is that I got I got a copy of The Little Prince gifted to me by like my oh, social nice. studies teacher. And I immediately lost it. Like not even oh, no. day, it was just gone. Oh. 
she and I never opened it. I ne- it was in like wrap wrapping. It wasn't like wrapping paper. It was like Somebody wrapped in like a it. little thing with like a bow on it. And I just like they must. Oh, I'm sure they did, but like that's the extent of of you that. Know, my, I did my. I was gonna my, say one of my English teachers gave me a copy of Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which I also lost almost immediately. Oh my god! So yeah. don't lend toaster anything. <laughs> These were gifts, so it was okay. They were Especially they were legally both. my oh, property, no. so I'm allowed to lose them. Yeah, even that's worse. True. I'm like that kid that borrowed my copy of Halo One for a year and a half. <laughs> Dick. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's Rollsy actually. Just playing yeah. Halo One for three and a half. I don't think he was no, playing it. He just it. didn't give it back. No, that shit. Oh, that's Little bad. shit. He didn't need it anyways. <laughs> I want a Halo One was a good game. That's still it's one probably. of my favorite video games. It's a you good own one. like sixteen other versions Halo of One's... Halo One. You'll be fine. Not back then. That was my Xbox my original Xbox copy of Halo One while the Xbox was still relevant. <laughs> yes. But no, I had a. Growing up queer in high school was, was shitty, though. Like, there was just the experience of, like, uh, trying to date multiple women and not really knowing, like, what the fuck you're doing and what the point of any of it is. And, like, trying to figure <laughs> out whether or not you're just reenacting what you saw in movies or what the goal is and whether and trying to figure out what's wrong with you. And then, meanwhile, the uh, Prop 8 was happening. So there's just, like, posters everywhere about how you're evil for existing and everyone is to vote against you. And then it happened. And, like, that was a great experience in high school. But there was also just a rumor that I was gay that went around, which was Mm -hmm. horrifying and also confusing. Yeah. In that I couldn't figure out what it was based on, in that there was no data to work with. Like, Hmm. there was no game. I I I heard. like I had no gay encounters. I heard of that rumor. <laughs> yeah, I heard of that rumor before knowing you. Yeah, that's that's deeply confusing because I was not <laughs> flamboyant. Uh, I didn't like have gay media interests. I had no encounters with any male classmates. Uh, I was never like caught experiencing gay anything. Like I didn't have a smart. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, I didn't have a smartphone, so it's not like any. It's not like I was like caught browsing something on my phone. Like, I didn't have a screen that could, like, like the the, the biggest evidence I was gay was. I, it's the. It's very difficult to come up with anything. Honestly, it's like what that I had Harry of, Potter books your... in my backpack. Like. I don't. <laughs> what? You're kind of nerdy think... and didn't have. You weren't constantly chasing after girls is probably the answer. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah I, the like fact I wasn't I, receptive I, enough to weird locker room talk, maybe or something. Like I, it's sincerely yes. difficult to place. Yeah. The, why yeah, the yeah, rumor yeah. was going it's... around because and it was right, which is the horrifying thing. But also, yeah, like, yeah, no, why did sense. they? I'm like, why the? Why did anyone know I was gay better than I did? is the distressing thing, but also maybe, mm. who knows, maybe it's based on literally nothing, maybe it's just mean, rude gossip thing. It's one of the things where I, I just think about how, like, one of the shittiest things the internet did was make it so that, like, teenager gossip and opinions and so on are broadcast and, like, part of old discourse now because of how yeah. shitty and vile and, like, vicious and, like, just unempathetic and cruel so much of it is like like young people are really awful all the time for no good reason like it's part of the reason why like i got a i got uh i found out that i needed glasses in like sixth grade i just realized that i that that it wasn't normal that people at the back of the class couldn't read the board uh eventually and so i got glasses but i insisted on wearing contacts all the way until senior year of high school because i was so like bothered by the idea of how I was being perceived and so on and like it's only a senior year I finally just showed up with glasses because I couldn't deal I just said fuck it to contacts for after like all those years because of like being affected by other people's perceptions and stuff like that and uh but yeah like I to this day I'm don't I don't know why that like that rumor spread so far and it was so like viciously spread and these all these little shits were all comp- were all complicit in spreading it and, and discussing me and talking about me beyond my back. And I'm like, what? I did. I had like a few friends total, <laughs> like who the fuck, like more people were interacting with this rumor than me. And it, what, I don't know what it was based on. It's so deeply confusing. <laughs> uh, and that's what school's like. That's, that's high school. It's awful. And then you graduate 
and you you either go into college or whatever or another job or whatever. And in my case, like I went on to college, and aside from that one trip to like I don't think it's UC Santa Barbara, but some other UC that's like down there near, like it's like past San Luis Obispo. Uh, like the aside, okay. the aside from that one trip where it revealed how shitty and fake all these people were to each other and not friends with each other. Aside from that, I had no other encounters with high schoolers after mm-hmm. the day I graduated. Like it, yeah, like I just I, had, I just had one friend that kind of would pop fuck? up here and there a bit, and that was it. Wow, uh, I can't you, believe you talk about me like that. You don't count, Andrew. <laughs> we had the same you don't class. Don't count. We were in the same. We were in, Cisco, the, same... We were in the same different class. To be clear, well, yeah, we were okay. in the same classroom <laughs> because we were Cisco was such a small series of classes that our teacher had to teach both Cisco classes in the same classroom at the same time, which is absurd. So Andrew and I shared a classroom <laughs> during class period for Cisco, but he, but I was in year one and he was in year two, and we never spoke or interacted. But we were, but, <laughs> but besides that, I would just see him standing along this one wall with his friends like a fucking Weezer cover, like they all just were standing along yeah. the same wall all the time, and he had his hair slicked back, just like like a yes. solid like shell of hair gel. Uh, and that was my entire <laughs> exposure to Andrew was just him standing with a few other people like next to this like goth looking girl. And he was just like a piece of like scenery. <laughs> and then yeah. one one day, like a year or two after yeah, graduation, yeah. when I'm in college, I coincidentally go to not one, but two of the same midnight releases as Andrew, as somebody who went to like no midnight <laughs> releases for gay video games. Uh, I was there for I was there for Rock Band 3 and he was there for Fable 3 and uh and force unleashed two and one of us won that night <laughs> and one of us did not <laughs> I won both w- nights. you did not win that night that was, <laughs> that was that was the simultaneous release for three games and mine was definitely the good one <laughs> but we uh we hit it off and talked a lot in uh in line and stuff and then uh way later while i was in high school when i was in college i got i got uh i kept seeing all those like abortion and abortion protesters and like and like those like Bible people that have like the Steven Crowder fold up table and stuff in high school in, in, in college, like protest trying to like fix the college students and so on. And I just saw I saw one too many like blown up poster boards of aborted fetuses where I was starting to get really opinionated about these people and thought that I would. Uh, and I thought I was I'm going to go do a political show on YouTube, which is which is like once again. We talk yeah, about how, be popular. When we talk about how horrifyingly stupid high schoolers are when it comes to most opinions and how it's actively frustrating to deal with their opinions online all the time, me as a, as a college student was not significantly better. I would have deeply regretted making this show if we did. But what happened is I put out a, a thing on Facebook for people that wanted to try doing this thing, and I met up with Andrew and a few other people just kind of on a whim, We and Andrew offered to host it in his garage, and we ended up just kind of fucking around and podcasting and, and joking around and not really doing anything of, with structure. And then largely the people that showed up that day never showed up again. And then Andrew and I made uh, sad games. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. So that's, the, that's the through line is I was motivated to be a, a, a political YouTuber for all of five minutes. And then we just played video games instead. <laughs> but also i'm from the high school but so... also all of those videos are probably full of bad opinions don't watch them <laughs> uh yes i started i was i've been on when youtube it... since i was 21 and i'm horrified by that <laughs> <laughs> i but the, i mean good news is you don't remember it so it's fine this gets back yeah to the that point. is true <laughs> uh i mean it's kind of it's weird when you think about like people you still hang out with in high school and stuff like that because I had a lot of really close friends that I like really planned on having just be in my life forever. And like, they just aren't like we, it's not that I hate them. It's not that I like stopped liking them. (laughs) I went off to college and they went off to college and we kept talking and then eventually stopped talking. And then eventually they just disappeared from my life. There is one person in my life from my high school who I maintain any contact with. And the thing about this is we did not stay in contact after high school. They were a person who was three years older than me. I was one of my best friends in the world. He, uh, we both went through a similar situation in high school and kind of bonded over that very just mundane, coincidental, like happenstance that happened to the both of us. 
uh, that it would be a really boring story to tell. It just we shared a weird experience. Uh, we were friends. We had a study hall together for like one period for one semester. And then he graduated and he became like just a fixture in my my hometown as like, oh, this is the guy that like works at the movie theater. So if you go to the movie theater at like 7 p.m. on a Wednesday, chances are I can go see a movie without having to pay for it because he'll wave me in. That would be sick. Um, and then I went to college and I just never spoke to him again. And then randomly on the Internet. I was browsing a forum and I saw a username that was so familiar to me and I did not know why, but I knew I was like this. I've talked to this person before and I don't know who they are. I don't know why this username is familiar. It's giving me every single time I look at it. I hear the AIM login sound. I don't know why Could you do? that's happening. So I so I sent him a message and I said, your, the, your username sounds familiar uh, I probably am coming off as an unhinged person, but, uh, hey, do I know you? Here is my name. I went to school in X. Uh, I need to know if I know you. And they said, hey, uh, I can't believe you found me. This is wild. Uh, it's me. So me and now, now we're like best friends again. Uh, and he's literally the only person from high school that I have spoken to. And I went 10 years without speaking to him. Yeah. All of the, it doesn't matter how much you you know you try people will just fade in and out and back into your life it's just a thing it's totally totally normal it can be really weird even thinking about reconnecting with people from back then because like the uh you don't like none of you are the same people <laughs> you're just yeah, completely exactly. different people so it's like it's almost like it can almost not be worth even trying just on the level of like even if you liked each other once how likely are you to now and so on yeah i mean i think there's another thing too there is that like oftentimes the friends you make in your hometown are friends of coincidence and circumstance you're friends with them yeah, because absolutely. they're there <laughs> like that's that's really the only reason why most people are friends with a lot of people. And you can form really great bonds, really important bonds with people that just happen to be around. And then, like, yeah, you, like, make friends with people who don't share your interests, and that's healthy and that's good. But, like, for the most part, like, a lot of your most close groups of friends, especially as a teenager, you're not friends even because you like each other that much. You're friends because you tolerate each other in the yeah. absence of people you want to be around more. Uh, and I don't mean that in like a cynical or jaded way. I mean that in the sense of like when you're an adult, you become very selective about who you spend your time with. But that yeah. also means that the people you do spend your time with, you really like because... <laughs> You get to be picky about who you want to be friends with, and it fucking rules. It is the best goddamn thing in the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I spent you a lot to. of, like, in college, I thought, okay, now these are my real friends. And I spent a lot of time with those people. And then they all also disappeared overnight the moment college was over. <laughs> like, it was so, it was, it's so quick that that an entirely new group of people come in and then are all gone yeah. again. Up to and including, like, we, like, we, like in addition to the like i i had the unusual college experience to some extent well you could literally be dorm mates with somebody for all of college and that might lead to a different experience but yeah. i had the unusual experience in that uh my major was small enough that we spent the entirety of our major with the same like 30 people for years yeah that was what my college was like as well yeah so we, i spent a lot of time with the same people and like midway through there was like a 10 day like desert uh, uh death valley trip and at the end there was a that month long capstone course where we were mapping and in, in the field and staying together and all that like i spent a lot of time with the same people uh and still they just it was just over the moment school was over and the, even the ones that you thought were your closer friends like you just lose you just lose touch with people again immediately <laughs> it just happens yeah i speak mm -hmm. to one Not person me. that i was friends with Never. in college still I have one dude, and even that, we don't talk super frequently. He was my Super Smash Brothers melee doubles partner. Uh, his name's Graham. He's great. Shout outs to that dude. Uh, love him to death. Only person from college I still talk to uh, for no reason other than the fact that he's the only one that I still really have any reason to talk to. We play games together sometimes, and that's it. No one else.
and I was I had a very thriving social life in college. It just your priorities change. That's just the way friendship is. Yeah. Yes. You also just find out a lot. Isn't. Of it. The, oh, the older you get, the more you realize just people were shitty too, and you don't really like them anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Like high schoolers, be, just, high school seems to incentivize shitty behaviors just in general. I mean, again, I mean, it just bit- depends on like your your uh, the amount of care you have for the people in your life or who those yes. people are. Like, obviously, if there's, you know, like you have a best friend or something, you don't want to lose that person. You might try a little bit harder to maintain that friendship, not at the cost of your own happiness, but like trying to see, have them see reason with you so that you can continue having a friendship. But yep. like, obviously, for strangers, that uh, that effort gets a lot more pointless. Like, uh, OK, why am I going to put a lot of effort into making, you know, like being friends with somebody if we don't really if there's not really much there holding us together. And I think that's normal. There's a lot of, you'll find a lot of people. You don't have to be so hyper-focused on like having friends in your immediate vicinity. Like it's okay. I mean, I think there's one other aspect to this too, which is that like people will grow and change and like not maintaining a friendship. It doesn't mean you like don't like them or don't respect them or, you know, stuff like that. Like I have a friend from this is a great example of like someone from college who I hung out with a lot, who I really like. And I have no bad feelings towards like in college. We were both in like the media studies, you know, sort of linguistics, anthropology core that I was in. And like we got along really well and we talked a lot about video games and we had a lot of similar comment like uh, things in common. And uh, and then after he graduated, like he just started getting really into like industrial machining like that just became his passion and over time he stopped playing a lot of video games and stopped reading Ah, academic journals cardinal sin and and i was like and so he would be like hey man look at this cool thing i machined and of course i was like that's cool that's a cool thing but like what else am i gonna talk about like i don't have anything to say about this This is not my my field so my yeah. responses just got less and less interesting to him, I assume. And he found friends in that sphere. Yeah. And he just started talking to them more. And then you just drift apart. And like, that's okay. It's totally cool. Now you and I have a buddy that I can call, I guess, if I need something machined. But <laughs> that is never going to happen in my life. So it's like, that's fine. I guess <laughs> I just won't speak to him. Never say that's, never. Machining is cool. I, I think that's... That's it is pretty, cool. Like, yeah, it is. It just isn't what toasters into. Exactly. Okay. It's like it's just not going to come up in my daily life. That's what I'm saying. So you will mm-hmm. just naturally yeah. fade away from people, and it doesn't doesn't mean you're being a bad friend. It just means like, hey, they're getting what they need out of a different group or a different thing, and you're getting what you need from someone else too. Hopefully, so you can like, I I think movies especially and like TV shows and like fiction does a really bad job of preparing people for for drifting away. Like, friendships are always depicted as, like, you either have a breaking point or a, or a specific point where you, like, part amicably and you all acknowledge that it's happening and you get a tearful goodbye and that's that's when you enter a new portion of your life. And reality isn't like that. Reality is you forget to message someone on WhatsApp and then four weeks later you realize, Oh shit, I forgot to respond. And then you feel too guilty to start a new conversation and you never talk to them again. (laughs) (laughs) That's just what it is. That's how it works. And sometimes you don't realize it. So you only realize it years later. Yeah, exactly. And that's okay. (laughs) It's fine. There, everyone's surviving. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm not. We're all dying. Well, Well, we're all dying in the end, but you know, that's just how it is. Grace you. Great. Finally. I, I'll 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 live forever. It's okay. dare you. I'll yeah. I I will die once One Piece ends. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cheat code to life. Just yeah. Look it yeah up. You just live. Mean... You live forever now. Yeah. It's kept me alive this long. <laughs> <laughs> Worked so far. But that's a that 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 was a very I have to say like that question somehow took took made an entire podcast. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> it, it awoke something. The uh, da- yeah, yeah. The Talking, dam uh, the dam burst and toaster flew forth. There's I think there we just have a lot of uh, 
things to say about youth kids these youth. days. Don't know how lucky they have it. I think it's a thing that everyone feels, and it's like an anxiety that a lot of people have, especially when it comes to high school. People are like, oh, no, high school is going to be so hard. Yeah. My life sucks. How do I survive? And it's like, I don't know, man. We all survived. You'll be all right. Like, just chill out. It's fine. People are dumb. Yeah. I don't really miss, I, the, I I don't really miss of... the people of high school because it was just a bad time, but I do miss the naive simplicity of high school. Like this yeah, absolutely. structure and purpose and this feeling that life has answers and goes somewhere because yeah. like real quickly you're like oh this is aimless and like <laughs> like there's nothing I... like like life has no purpose uh you don't really have like a way to win or lose at being yourself and like what the, are we here for? the entire idea like the the whole system doesn't actually care that people get jobs or like fit anywhere it just kind of <laughs> like school just ends yeah. and then good yep. luck <laughs> no one even tells uh, you how to pay your taxes you just you might just get a letter <laughs> and be like oh no <laughs> i think the the thing i think about with that is like i miss when 50 a 50 minute long period of like math class was the most excruciatingly long period of my life. <laughs> like, I, I, I wish I could perceive time the way I perceived it when I was younger because I would get mm. so much more done. Whereas now, I look at the clock and there's I have 50 minutes until I have to do something. And I'm like, well, that's not enough time to that's do anything. I, I, used to, I, I used that. to I used to see the clock and see 50 minutes in my math class and think, oh, no. That I have to deal with this for 50 minutes. Oh I'm going God. to go actually insane. The time is endless. I will never get through this 50 minute period. And it would feel like seven hours to get through that time. It is actively uh, wild it was, to think about how short classes were. Yeah. And now I sit down. I sit down to to record an episode of Final Fantasy 16 and I actively feel like I did maybe half a thing by the time my timer is going off to let me know that I can end my episode. I haven't and had I'm the, like, oh, I haven't had the experience the today where I was like, like I was finishing breakfast, like shitty reheated leftovers from yesterday's breakfast. And then I'm like, well, the podcast is in 50 minutes. Like I don't, I can't, it's not really, I can't like start drawing or like try to work on one of my scripts or really like, I, I, I guess I just waste the next 50 minutes. <laughs> like, I could, like, like, yeah, like, not, like it feels fine. like such what? a small amount of time. That I'm like, how can I even begin to do something in that amount of time? What are you? That's terrifying. Oh, no, my brain mm -hmm. hates having like I like having the you streams be because it's efficient. because it's good to have like, you know, things where you meet up with your friend group and stuff. But it's actively bad for my productivity when I just see this like ticking clock of how much time I have left to be productive every day and it just shrinks rapidly and then sometimes it just quickly becomes like oh well I can't be able to do anything with that <laughs> mm -hmm. fuck me I guess that's the bane of, of zoom calls that are yep. just randomly sh scheduled throughout the, the day the worst thing for a work day is a 20 minute long zoom call in the middle of the, between the morning like 12 20 <laughs> to 12 40 because it's like great now i just beforehand. lost yeah. the hour on both caps here like there's no i can't do anything between 12 40 and one and i can't do anything between 12 and 12 20 so guess you just scheduled an hour-long meeting that's only gonna take 20 fucking minutes <laughs> yeah i am wah, 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 wah. that's the real problem with with the adulthood you grow up in high school and it takes forever for you to realize people suck. And then in uh, it, when you're an adult, it takes you forever to realize that uh, time is meaningless. Yep. Like the, great, the great thing about the class is that it's like akin to like recording a Let's Play episode and that you just start it and then it's just going to be that long. And then it just yeah. one way or another, you made an episode, whatever happened in it and like a class, it just starts and ends on its own and you just have to be there as opposed to like. Being being productive is such a self driven thing that you can. The act of starting is like hard to do in many cases. You, you're not yeah. just you're not just attending something. Life was so much easier other, in high school, dear lord. That just kind of leads <laughs> to the the other life hack secret, which is that like, if you want to do something, just fucking do it. 
Just like, just do it. Just start right now. Yeah, do it now. Do it now. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, Nike, like, Nike you, wasn't lying. Just do it. Yeah, yeah, literally, just do it. Like if if you're if you're the kind of person who sits and thinks this is the best piece of advice I'd ever received in my life, I'm gonna be fucking real for a minute here. I'm talking directly into the microphone. Um, oh my god! I told someone I wanted to read more. I was like, oh yeah, like I wish I could read more. And their response was like, if you want to read more, like stop being fucking cute about it. And I was like, what do you mean by that? And they were like, they were like, do you, what do you think you need to do to read? Do you need to be sitting on your couch with the fire crackling while you drink a brandy and smoke a pipe? Like you, you're standing here right now. There is time between my responses fucking read you should be picking read. a book right now <laughs> yeah exactly like if, if you're if okay, you literally extreme. just told me you told no, me unironically yeah. no. you wanted to read more why aren't you reading more you got time to do this shit you're on the toilet for five minutes is reading for five minutes not good enough for you just fucking read you're sitting at the line at the grocery store you have 10 minutes while the person in front of you is checking out you're telling me that 10 minutes ten isn't mi- isn't up to your, your standards your you reading connoisseur read what? the fucking book it like, can be it's that, fucked up yeah well, you absolutely can be, yeah. can be. uh if, you know, the, you, it's like, you're sitting it's, on the train a, in the morning. To, grocery stores are but so badly true. organized at this point that it's actively a deterrent to buying anything that you can't self check out. Agree. Be- because uh, if, you buy, you if, you, if you buy if you buy alcohol like, or anything like that, you're actively fucked because you have to wait in the giant line where there's only one person paid to do it. Yeah, I don't want to derail the conversation. Sorry, but, is, but you're, my, you're, my, I totally agree. M- my my point here is just like if you want to do something, don't be cute about it. Don't be worried about set and setting. Nothing is that sacred. Like you want to play more video. I want to play more retro games. You know what I do? I buy a little Wait. emulator handheld and I put the retro games on it. And when I'm waiting in line at places, I pull it out and I play. I play six and a half minutes of a Final Fantasy Tactics map on my little emulator handheld and then I press the sleep button and I put it back in my backpack when I can't put my brain on it. I I'm not sitting here trying to play it on my CRT so that I have like the perfect experience. Fuck that. If you want to do something, just do it. You want to record let's plays, get started. Don't wait to get Mm -hmm. a good microphone. Don't wait to sound treat your room. That shit can come as you do it. Just get started. I waited too long to do too many things in my life. I could have been Keith. I could have been playing video games on YouTube for a decade if I just fucking did it when I was 20, when I told myself I wanted to. You want to do shit, just do it. That's the secret. Started a video true. essay about Resident Evil 6 in 2013, and then I just didn't make it. I wrote, like, pages and pages of script. I recorded, like, dozens of hours of footage, annotated and shit, and then I just st- stopped. Ultimately, I'm just like... You gotta publish it sometime, Keith. Like, you gotta do like, it. I'm just like, no one's gonna like this. No one's gonna watch this. This is a huge... This is putting so much of myself into a thing that isn't gonna pay off, and then I just didn't do it, ultimately. Just do it. That's the secret. People ask, how do I be successful? How do I get started? You want to know there's, how you get started? There's still started? a shitty video up of me summarizing the plot in chronological order across the different playthroughs that is on both of our both Sad Games and my channel that was part of that project. Yes. <laughs> and then the rest never came out. But I think in I I can't speak from experience of, of uh having essays about video games. It's the uh the the thirteenth most popular video on sad games. Yeah, the, the, no one I really will likes watching my videos. I'm a little bit scared of uh, how daunting it is, uh, and and I don't want to make you more scared, Keith, or or regretful or anything. But I'm a little, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit scared of how daunting it is to be in the footsteps of people who make, like for example, Resident Evil. Um, uh, forget I forget her name. But there's this uh, this uh, uh, this YouTube channel that has like three or four Resident Evil like multi hour long recap and criticisms and stuff, and it's incredible. It's really good, and it goes on to uh, talk about the even the bad Resident Evils and ties it all neatly together. And I'll, I'll, I'll once I finish my point, I'll look it up on YouTube and I'll I'll mention it. I'll uh, but uh, I'll mention the name of the channel. 
but I know that if I ever did something about Resident Evil, I knew I know it wouldn't be that. It wouldn't be what she did because I, you know, I would just be copying her and her st- style or maybe trying to make the same thing she already did and that would make it worse. So I would have to find an angle, a new angle. And it, it, like, objectively speaking, and I, like, I know for a fact, a lot of people, a lot of creators do not do that. And so they just, you know, rehash what already exists, videos already exist. But objectively speaking, you don't need to do that because people find YouTube channels at random. There's, you know, there's the same video done by different people hundreds of times. It's just, you know, especially if it's on the short side, but on the bigger side, it, it's fine as well. Like you can talk about how Bloodborne is best, uh, is the best entry point into the Soul series in many videos. Many people can do that. And it's it works because, you know, how, how likely is it that a random person on YouTube is going to see the same uh, is going to see well actually yeah. the, i'm saying that how likely is it youtube will recommend this, the video from another channel saying the same thing that's actually how likely it is so maybe i'm, <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> i i was gonna I say like i to started watching more... that quest 64 video toaster linked and then gave up on that and then watched two other suggested quest 64 videos <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm I, getting a ton of the quest like 64 Ab- videos in my recs now too yeah i was like go watch the completionist go watch pro jared i'm like they really think i want this endless deluge of <laughs> quest 64 videos after i didn't finish one <laughs> yeah youtube is yeah i don't smart i don't know i think i think about like when you create something i think of like the did you know gaming people where yep what like the most generic possible thing you can think of which is just video game facts and something that's been so saturated like that market is hugely saturated you can you could find video game fact videos on youtube going back to ins- its inception mm-hmm. um someone will just sit there and tell you a dumb fact about video games Such did you did content. you know that it's called final but, fantasy because it was their last chance to make a game before the studio went under yeah pay me five thousand like, dollars all right but like Is that did you know that gaming thing? yeah <gasps> yeah it, it was my called, joke yeah. <laughs> wait <laughs> it, is it a joke or is it true the joke was supposed real. to be that it's such an overstated <laughs> factoid that it's tedious to hear again. And you're like, is that oh, true? No. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, like they quote up, like, did you know that during the scene with the Joker, the Heath Ledger, the bomb didn't go off and he improvised, reacted, and then it did go off. I, um, also, you know I that Viggo Morrison broke his toe? <laughs> I didn't know that. I'm very smart at movies. <laughs> But That's, yeah, I mean, the uh, Booker Hauer actually wrote the speech himself. <laughs> but that's the thing is like, did you know gaming showed up? Did picked like the most generic possible field with the most generic possible content at the beginning? They just regurgitated the same facts, but they figured out a style to do that. And not only did they do that, they used that to gain momentum in doing other things. Like, well, this yeah. is fine. We can do this. They, but what they if created like a template got, and got yeah, better at yeah. their template and got and what experience if doing out, stuff? Didn't even start yeah, as videos. Like, like, it was it was Tumblr blog. It was Tumblr. Yeah, just Tumblr pictures. I remember and then, that like, Tumblr blog. It got blog. to a point where, <laughs> like, and now when you talk about video game facts, you talk about did you know gaming? Most of the shit that people yep. know comes from them now. They go out of their way to do like journalism to find. Yeah, shit they're now. like an actual journalism company, which is really <laughs> yeah. cool. Yeah. They are like amazing, but it's a story that starts from like they just picked the most fucking generic shit and figured out a way to build themselves up to being Google, right? They just that's the thing. You don't say I'm going to search for something. You say I'm going to Google it like that's what Did You Know Gaming did. And it's just about your passion and execution on a thing. It doesn't matter if you might follow in someone's footsteps. What matters is if you can take that and do something more than they do. Do something with that brings more people in. Like it, you don't have to. It's not that you're copying somebody, but the idea that you have to be worried like, oh, but someone else did something similar to that. I don't want to like be compared to them it's like who gives a shit just keep going and if someone says like you're just like that person okay whatever people being worried about being similar is hilarious (laughs) specifically because like i like i got sent down that rabbit hole of watching uh quest 64 videos and it was suggesting me like here's pro jared from a decade ago and stuff like that and like i got sent back to the time of like that that specific smarmy brand of like sarcastic rude angry gamer boys from back in the day Mm -hmm. that were all following in the footsteps of like nostalgia critic and angry video game nerd and like 
not only was all of that content identical, it was all bad. Like it's uh, yeah. it's it's impressive how much that entire genre of video when you watch it, like so much of it is just a nerd sitting in his room, awkwardly pausing for laughter or for emphasis after his incredibly sick burns that are like the most milk toast, uninspired nonsense as he talks yep. about an entire ass video game that takes dozens of hours to play for only about 10 minutes. So it's like as little as you could possibly say about something basically and the jokes basically don't exist there's no critical analysis and collectively they're almost this, like to the point where like if three white guys make made an angry video game nerd video about the same video they'd be indistinguishable videos from each other like yeah the 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 variety has only gone up in the last decade for like if you're doing like analysis or discussion stuff, videos yeah. and so on like people figured out how to have personalities in videos and that was a breakthrough because for a long time you <laughs> just did the dreamworks eyebrow and acted smarter than the thing and that was all you that yeah. was your whole brand for 10 minute chunks every week and each vi and yeah every video was indistinguishable from your peers and also from the other videos you made like it was the same formula and same tone it was it was it was incredible honestly how much like every nostalgia critic video was the same video and so on like it's it's a wild departure how much things have gotten better since then it's like if you're worried about being the same as anybody else it's like i don't know Go back and re finish your script. Go back and rewatch the video that you saw already about that topic, and then just check if so you didn't just literally rewrite one of their points or something. And if not that, just move on with life. It's whatever. I, yeah, I, I that's I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not very good at at that. I wouldn't be a very good video video game essayist, I suppose. Why? Because uh, what, what I like. You, what, what? Maybe I feel like I feel like I just don't have ideas that are new in the sense of when I have an idea, I look up you know to form to shape the idea. I look up the material that allows me to shape that idea. So eventually, I I just sort of find the channels that may that say the things that I think. You know, maybe they don't say it all in the same video, but but. It, but you know one of the one it. of the best changes was ever... that these videos went from being i need to make weekly content on this template to feed a feed a demand and it's like factory produced repetitive content to being like here's my neurodivergent hyperfixation info dump like here's the thing that i just i can't I, i'm really fixated on this one specific thing either because it's really good or really bad like here's why i can't stop thinking about this thing and that became like the new format and it became passion yeah, driven and it became like here's my interesting perspective because of the thing that i've spent too much time th thinking about when half the other people that played or watched this thing moved on immediately and like that's that's half of why people's perspectives are interesting is because they just keep thinking about this thing mm -hmm. have have you ever have you ever watched uh true crime uh, youtube videos no i don't like true crime and they seem kind of concept. vile so <laughs> Look, I, I, I'm not here yeah. to. I am definitely not here to make a moral statement about true crime stuff. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah I'm not. I'm not saying there. it from a moral but, perspective either. I uh, mean, I am from my perspective. No, yeah. I I, I just want to know if you had a basis for it. But the idea here is that with true crime YouTube videos, almost a hundred percent of them are literally people reading from the exact same Wikipedia page. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. They're one hundred percent. They are very much not they're like no different and indistinguishable from one another. It's like the uh, 75 but, Overwatch channels all reading the same patch notes, except it's someone's <laughs> yeah. murder. Yeah, exactly. And uh, but but what makes it interesting is that people get focused on particular content creators based solely on like parameters like their voice their cadence the way yeah, that you're they, liking the flavor uh, of their content yeah <laughs> exactly it's like it's like coffee right all coffee is bad the difference is that you can put stuff in it to make it just taste a little bit more manageable and like that's what it's all the same right it's all just made from the same shitty ugly bean but you can <laughs> kind of make it a little bit more interesting uh with Audience. your own sense earlier yeah. when i said that people uh, can be dumb and wrong and have bad opinions. 
I was talking about what Andrew just said. Uh, so if you want to erase everything he just said, uh, yeah, coffee is good and the beans no. are tasty and friendly looking. And uh, opposite to what he actually just said, the more shit you put in it, the worse it gets. So no, just absolutely erase not. the shit that he just said. And no. understand that your friends can be dumb and wrong sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but so, yeah, there's no reason to be worried about the idea that you might just be saying the exact same thing as somebody else. It's about and so is you. everyone else. It's, yeah, and so is everyone else. It's about you. It's about the way that you present it. It's a way about like ultimately content creation is something you want to make it's it doesn't matter what other people have made it matters what i mean yeah. you can obviously enjoy what other people make right don't get me wrong there it's the idea that uh you you want to make something so you make the thing you want to make because then you attract the people who are just like you and want to see the thing that you made that's the rotational idea of content creation is that you're not you, yeah. if you go into it with the assumption that like yeah you're going to be like the best at doing it or you go in with the idea that you know, you you might uh, oh, you, yeah, usurp someone from. else's particular style. That does, yeah, you're just you're just here, like he said, to to express yourself to either your hyperfixation or your interest in machining, whatever the hell you want to do. Yeah. You just make a video about it, and then people will show up and be like, "Hey, wait, that guy's doing something I like," and they'll just keep showing up. It doesn't. There again, there's like that two two sides thing. Like if you're if this is what you want to do as a job, right? There's a way different angle you have to go about it. You, just like any kind of entrepreneurship, you have to suddenly become a lot more hyper invested in doing a lot of stuff to make it succeed. But if this is just something you want, you just like Keith's, um, uh, Keith's essay channel. If it's something you just want to enjoy and make something for, then just do it because yeah that's like that's what that's what it, that, that's what people want they want to see things that you wanted to make because they're looking for people making things that they want to see and it's like yeah i i don't don't think of it like a yeah i think it's like the problem everyone assumes is like everything has to be like hollywood where it needs to be the most accessible content for everyone and that's not necessarily true you want like a middle ground you want something that people can come into but isn't gated Right. You don't want content that no one's that people have to have been a long time there for to get all the good jokes or whatever. But you don't want it like you don't want it so watered down that it has to be, you know, easy to digest for every single human on the planet. It yeah. just makes something that you enjoy that is fun and and focus more about how much fun you're having making the thing. Don't focus too much on if it is it going to be commercially viable because that's. I don't know yeah. or, or like is it derivative or is it you know don't don't worry about that stuff if it is guess what just like high school you'll forget about it in like five years anyway so who gives a shit and, and then you're, you're gonna, gonna exactly, list the yes exactly you're gonna <laughs> yeah. list the videos exactly anyway. the point <laughs> yeah exactly yeah do you know how many big content creators have like a, a graveyard sitting in their library list of unlisted videos you can never find anymore like <laughs> hundreds of them like there's i bet you there's like huge youtube channels that just have graveyards of private videos you'll never see and oh, completely that, and that's fine do you know what guess what no one cares <laughs> like nobody yeah. cares and that's like one of the things still... that always there's always like a big shock to me is when somebody comes out as, as trans and they transition publicly and then like a year or two later you look back and suddenly every video they made more than like a year ago is just gone and you're like oh like on, on, <laughs> like on some level you're like i get it but also like that's so much work just gone <laughs> yeah. they just put they just put it all away and you're like holy shit it's just gone <laughs> counterpoints was my first experience of that oh yeah I was, uh so if you're from mars did that uh contrapoints did that I keep wondering yeah. whether or not Philosophy Tube will do it or not. And I'm like, there's some really good videos. I there's some really good stuff that you made. Oh, I'm going to miss the data video. <laughs> data video is really fun like to watch. like a Snapchat watch. filter over it or oh, something. Oh, mine is right? The Astronaut. Yeah. The Astronaut is really good. There's a lot of really good stuff on all those channels. Like, that's why yeah. they, that's why we were subscribed. But the, uh, yeah. I just, I very, I very much enjoy the, uh, the, like, Socratic dialogue slash video game logic writing of the data video on Philosophy Tube. It's a lot of fun. I think I mean it's I probably the, still available to Patreon to Patreon. So it's still up now. Probably yeah. For now. No, no, I mean old stuff. 
Maybe. Well, maybe I, I don't know. Maybe. But I, I think remember the entirely sure here... why stuff gets taken down, honestly. Like, Worthy Kids has a, like, third little piggy video that, like, is a... It's, it's like, it's got footage of, like, Nightmare Ned and Banjo-Kazooie, and it's got, like, mixed in with, like, uh, with, like, this, like, anthro pig animation, and it's just, it's not just unlisted. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know what, 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 I can never tell what's happening behind the scenes with YouTubers sometimes, or why ch certain choices are made. I'm like, what, why, why is this video gone? I don't know why. I like it. I think the the lesson to take away from a lot of this is uh, is very succinctly summarized in the opening speech of the best game show ever made. Uh, it is what Sam Rice says at the beginning of every single episode of Game Changer. The only way to learn is by playing. The only way to win is by learning. And the only way to begin is by beginning. You just have to do it. That's how you get started on this. And that's just how you get anywhere in life is you just do stuff. And it's fine. And that's how it works for all of us. You draw badly, you write badly, and then you just do some more of it. And suddenly... And don't worry about failing. Is, then you look back and you're like, fuck, yeah. I made that last year? <laughs> don't worry about failing. Don't worry about how far everyone else is getting. And don't worry about dumb people who are telling you you're doing it wrong or the dumb people that are telling you, like, I hate what you're doing. It's like, okay, dude, cool, you're, you're dumb. Who cares? Thanks for the engagement. Yep. <laughs> yep. like and subscribe leave a comment below if you disagree with me i won't read it <laughs> don't 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 agonize over not expressing yourself enough if they don't have any particular calling that you're of, like thing you're thinking about doing but if there is a thing you want to do you just got to start doing it yep mm -hmm. otherwise you'll just be sad you didn't do it for longer later yep that's very true yep. yeah and that's the podcast. Send your questions, dialogue choices, podcast at gmail.com. Dialogue's spelled the way that it is on your screen right now and not the other way. So don't fuck that up. But don't send it, that it question in again. We already got that question. If you do it again, we're going to be mad. We get a lot or of questions. Or just don't send a question in. We're not your parents. We can't tell you what to do. Listen, if I don't like a question, I just drag it into the answered questions folder and, and I just be lie. Unbearable. <laughs> I just lie and I put it in the full answer, the folder of the ones that were done. And look at that. Damn. You'd never know. So yeah. we're all better. I just off dragged for two it. more into the answered. We, I just put two in the answered <laughs> folder because we finished them and two other ones because oh, I'm like, right. no. <laughs> well, don't want to read that one. So you can send them in and see where you fall on the uh, <laughs> on the, the answered uh, scale. The answered squa scale. Squale? Scale. What? This podcast yeah. goes off the rails more and more every week. No, no it, it doesn't. Mean, you haven't. Have, have you have clearly have not been listening to the history of this podcast. <laughs> we have peaks. It's normal. Bye. 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 bye.